Hi, in this video we're going to talk about a few things to keep in mind when building with Tetrix gears. There are two main classifications of gearing in Tetrix. There's actual gears and then there's also sprocket and chain. And there's a lot of benefits and drawbacks to both. For gears, they're generally used in higher torque situations and it's a little bit more simple to put them together and there's also no slack in the system. And you also have a little bit more uh, variability in what you can do with them. They're more customizable. Whereas with chains, the, they're generally used for higher speed situations and there's also a lot of slack, so in higher torque situations there's a lot of unreliability. And there's also a lot more work that goes into these chain systems because they have to be cut to the right length, the chain has to be cut, and they also have to have the perfect amount of slack and over time the slack builds and there's a lot of maintenance to make sure that the slack is uh, the correct amount. And so generally chains are a little bit better for robot use, but there's a lot more work that goes into them, whereas gears, they're a lot simpler and generally used for high torque situations and easier to make. One of the most important things about building with gears and Tetrix is making sure that you have the proper gear mesh. And that's really just the distance between the two gears. And you can change that with the offset motors that Tetrix uses. So you can change the dis distance between the two gears. and what you really want is for the gears to be able to just barely have a piece of paper go through them. And uh, this is a really good little trick to use to make sure that the gears are not too tight, that there's a lot of friction, but also not too loose, that they're slipping. One thing to keep in mind when building with Tetrix sprocket and chain is the amount of slack that you have in your chain. For high speed situations, you want to have about a centimeter of movement when you're moving the slack up and down. For higher torque situations, you want your slack to be a little bit less so that the chain link won't skip and cause a lot of damage to the robot. Another thing you want to do when building with these Tetrix chains is to have a chain cover around the system to make sure that no dust and debris can get inside your chains because it can clog it up and can make a really bad mess. And it's basically just a piece of polycarbonate that's shaped sort of like the chain, uh, square corners and holes for the axles to go through, and then you mount the polycarbonate to whatever Tetrix parts you have around. One thing to keep in mind when building with Tetrix gear trains is the type of bearings that you're able to use. Now there's two different types. There's bronze bushings, which is a solid metal just made out of bronze, and it's a self-lubricating metal, so it runs really smoothly. And then there are also these Actobotics bearings, and there are benefits and drawbacks to both. For the bushings, they're much stronger because they're just a one solid piece, and they don't have any moving parts and they don't run as smoothly and so there's a little bit extra added friction but for the bearings they run really well in high speed and they're really smooth but unfortunately if you put a lot of load on them they will break. By using this advice you should be able to make reliable and consistent gear trains.